Hi, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar. My name is Christy, and I'm joined here with Ben and Kevin. Today, we're going to be presenting a formula for success, how to securely store and distribute your media content. I encourage you to follow along with the conversation with the hashtag cloud distribution and the Twitter handle at Base Media Cloud. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to tweet at us. And without further ado, here is Ben and Kevin. Thanks so much, Christy, and thanks everyone for joining today. Um, this is Ben Folks, Managing Director of Base Media Cloud. Um, just to give you a quick run through the agenda for today. Um, first of all, we're going to look at setting the scene of what's going on in the media sector and what we've seen as the challenges fed back to us from customers. Um, we've got some case studies to go through with you, um, which are specifically around storage and distribution workflows. Um, and then Kevin is also going to run through our actual solution overview, showing you two products. Um, within the case studies, we're going to be looking at ITV um, to show some production workflows. We're also going to be looking at Formula E Championship with Aurora Media Worldwide. Um, and Traxxas PLC, who do a lot of um, transport analytics and global file sharing. Um, so, Kevin, could you just give us a bit of a background into your previous broadcast technology experience, please? Yeah, yes. Um, hello, everyone. My name's Kevin. I'm the Solutions Architect for Base Media Cloud. So, yeah, basically, I've worked in sort of IT media for around 15 years. I've been specializing in sort of, um, cloud-based technology for the past 10 years. And my experience is sort of with IPTV, video on demand, video over IP, live streaming, you know, UDP, file-based acceleration, so this is sort of definitely my specialist area. Thanks, Kev. And Kevin joined us last May from Deluxe, and um, our whole team actually has got broadcast and post-production background. So um, personally, I used to own and run a post-production company, and you know the, the whole team has got workflow experience from an on-the-ground perspective. And um, that was really the inspiration behind Base Media Cloud. So to give you a bit of an idea about our business model and what we're all about, our core focus is providing media-focused cloud technology um, for media companies so that we do the technology and you make great content. Um, it's really as simple as that. And this has been inspired by the fact that our previous experience and experience of our customers has been that procuring technology, managing it, upgrading it, looking after it every day can be very time-consuming and very expensive. And with the advent of cloud, what it's allowing us to do is offer services on a utility basis, um, pay per use, that kind of flexes with the way that we all work in the industry. So that's really the inspiration behind the company. But what else has actually motivated us to get going? So crucially, it's about problem solving, problem solving for our customers. And some of the key things that we've been looking at. Firstly, how can we manage storage um, more elegantly? So in the last couple of years, we've had major industry shifts, things like moving from tape delivery to AS11 file delivery for broadcast. Um, digital cinema going to digital cinema packages or DCPs, and obviously the explosive online video market. Um, and that has brought inherent challenges around how to store those digital assets. So a lot of our customers are feeding back saying, you know, I've had broken hard drives before, I've had hardware failure, I've had storage controllers go down, um, classic instances of not being able to find content when they really need it. Um, and even examples of, you know, post firms and production companies and distributors where assets have been lost and can't ever be found. And, so our first primary objective was how do we do storage um, for customers in a more solid, secure way? And secondly, we're addressing how to do modern file delivery. So, you know, we all used to send couriers, we used planes and shipping, and, and, and it was very clunky. Um, and even when we transitioned to file-based, we were still using portable hard drives. Now, in the last couple of years, um, high-speed file transfer technologies have really matured and they've become a lot more cost-effective. So. The challenges we're addressing here are around you know, replacing slow shipping with high-speed internet transit, um, replacing expensive flights and expensive courier services with you know, self-service web um, GUIs, and also um, getting around the problems of waiting for content. You know, if you've got a show that's been produced and needs to be delivered to multiple locations simultaneously, these days the sensible approach is to use cloud technologies and internet. Another core driver of our business model is around helping clients to lose the hardware. Um, and we know that it's not going to happen overnight, and we're, we're very realistic about the bridge between on-premise equipment and cloud-based workflows. But crucially, um, cloud enables people to stop having to rely on expensive premises. Um, it enables collaboration, so you can have teams working in lots of different countries at the same time. Um, it also scales to meet demand. So, you know, you might have a commission come in or a big series that needs to be sold, and it's a very peaky trophy business. It's very rare that it's a fixed monthly 
capacity that you require. Um, the other core part of the way we approach things is about remaining software agnostic. And this means our clients choose the applications they prefer, and then we offer them as a service. So, you know, it's not like having a proprietary stack that everyone has to use. We're, we're much more free and much more modular in the way that we provide services. So finally, it's about reducing costs. And the true costs of running technology these days are actually very high. When you consider um, buying, installing, maintaining, upgrading, it really does stack up. So this is against the backdrop of media budgets reducing, um, unpredictable workloads where you might have a very busy period one month and a very quiet period the next, tightening CapEx budget, so the actual tightening budget for procuring and buying the equipment. And also a lot of our customers during our market research fed back to us saying, how do I keep up with new technology? So, you know, our mantra is we do all of the new technology so you don't have to. So I'm just going to throw it to Christy and we're going to do a quick poll just to see what your challenges are all about. Yes, we'd love to we'd love to cater this a little bit more towards the audience. So if you guys could go ahead and answer in the um, question area, the chat functionality, what's your biggest media storage and distribution challenges currently? Is it capacity, flexibility, cost, performance, or complexity? And feel free to just type in A, B, C, D, or E. The poll can be found on your screen. Um, but we're just curious, you know, what What's your biggest challenge? Where, where do you find your biggest problems are? Because um, we're looking to solve those for you. So if you could let us know by just answering in the, the, chat, the chat box, that would be great. I'll give you a few, few moments. That's great. Thanks, Christy. Um, yeah, as, as I said, we've, we've really set this business up based on what customers are telling us. And um, we'd love to get your feedback so that we can adjust and, and provide the sort of solutions that the industry is looking for. So moving forward, and please do ask any questions on the chat screen as we go through, and we'll, we'll make a note to get back to you on them. Um, moving forward to the next section, um, this is all high-level you know, theory, really, or, or our personal opinion, but what about some actual analysis to back it up? So there's some pretty big numbers um, happening in the media sector at the moment. Um, this research was taken from the Coughlin Associates report from 2015, um, and it's all about the digital storage capacity for the M&E sector in the next six years. Um, it's, it's fascinating. So um, after looking at lots of different companies and profiling lots of different companies, they deduced that between 2014 and 2020, there's going to be just under a five times increase in the storage capacity required. And, and it makes sense because this is due to the uplift in camera resolutions to things like 4K, 8K, um, the improvement in color quality and sampling with things like high dynamic range or HDR. And we're already moving into things like 360 filming and, and virtual reality, and it's just going through the roof. So it makes perfect sense that the data ratios are increasing. Um, in the middle there, you can see the actual media data ratios by type of usage for the storage. So interestingly, 26% um, is going to be for content distribution. I think a couple of years ago, that would have been analog. That would have been admittedly digital tape, but it was a physical device. It was something you had to ship around. Um, and now it's all ones and zeros. Um, also, interestingly, is the huge gr growth in use of cloud storage. So between 2014 and 2020, it's estimated that there's going to be around a 24 times growth in the use of cloud storage by media and entertainment companies. And um, this really is due to the fact that the costs are going lower, the access is now easier, um, and it's really beginning to tip the balance between you know, procuring in-house versus outsourcing to a data center. So what is our model? Um, what makes us different from other companies? Um, the main thing is that we're very focused on purely um, media and digital media workflows. And that does bridge across production, post-production, distribution, and, and lots of different areas of media in between. Um, but we are not a provider for you know, everyone out there in the public. It's very much specific niche services for digital media. Um, the business model is all about being flexible, affordable, and on demand. Um, and we provide solutions that are purely for big media. So, you know, a lot of services out there like Dropbox and Hightail and WeTransfer and those types of systems, they have limitations on speed and performance and also how many files you can actually throw through the system. Ours is unlimited scale um, and we can shift terabytes of data around on a daily basis and we'll show you some examples of that today. The other difference is that we, rather than building out software, 
we work with manufacturers. So obviously we're doing this presentation with Zadara Storage today. Um, we've built an entire cloud around Zadara Storage in the UK, um, hosted with Vodafone. Um, that's an example of how we're working with manufacturers to offer a really high quality of service. Um, and lastly, it's about being providing these services on a flexible pricing basis. So everything includes support, upgrades, maintenance, um, integration, and it's literally just kind of one bill each month. So I'm going to bring Kevin in to talk about our technology principles because what makes us different from the rest is the way that we simplify the way we build things. So Kevin, can you just talk a bit around our methodology and how you've built up the platform? Yeah, definitely. So basically we've got connectivity. Um, you can use our cloud service over the public internet or we can also arrange ded dedicated connectivity via lease lines, you know, and actually sort of integrate you, you know, directly to our infrastructure. Um, cloud. We build our systems on flexible infrastructure, and we can sort of rapidly deploy new systems. You know, and you know, obviously with Zadara at the back end, we can sort of give you you know 100 terabyte volumes. You know, pretty much instantly. Um, and obviously, because it's a cloud business, we can sort of tear down the systems just as quick. You know, so you can actually sort of stop paying for them and make make savings. Um, automation. Basically, if we can automate something, we will. You know, we're, we're sort of quite a lean operation. You know, um, we're currently working on a platform that will actually automate provision of um, Zadara storage, and also it'll be doing clever things like sort of automated uh, transcode services. Um, but yeah, like we, we try and automate everything really. Um, basically, in aggregation uh, partner with best-in-class hardware and software providers. And basically, that enables us to give you the best possible service without actually having to sort of go out and capex, you know, at great expense yourself. Absolutely. And one of the one of the key things that Kevin and the engineering team do is they do all of the hard work of actually building the system, so the customer just gets a single pane of glass or a single access point. And you know, cloud's quite a complex game. Um, a lot of companies that we spoke to want to do it, but don't want the hassle of having to engineer it themselves. So the way that we built this is very modular, it's very quick to deploy. Um, if, if a company says to us in the morning, I need 100 terabytes and 100 users, and I need to ship a whole series to the US, then we can actually have it up and running within hours. So that's really the, the, the crucial difference between cloud workflows versus the old way of doing things. Um, this diagram kind of shows you what the stack looks like. And we, we don't want to go too technical today because there isn't really time. But in, in simple forms, Kevin, can you just talk us through the red block at the top there, and then also how we're utilizing the Zadara storage tiers, please. Yeah, definitely. I mean, um, media software as a service, we, you know, we, um, we're really sort of media focused. Um, you know, there's, there's other people who do enterprise really well, but we do media really well. And that's, I suppose that's what makes us stand out from other cloud providers. Um, high speed media storage, this is basically our sort of, you know, 24 hour always on spinning disks that, um, you know, we can attach to sort of media applications. Um, file transfer applications, backup DR, library storage, um, you know, using the same sort of Zara technology underneath, we can actually, you know, use the storage for um, backup and DR for our clients. Archive and media storage, again, Zara storage underneath. Um, I mean, I suppose what makes our archive um, offering, you know, quite attractive is actually we can sort of, you know, to actually tell you to a disk level where the data sits. And it, you know, obviously, it sits in our UK Vodafone data center, so that, that makes that one quite a, a good proposition for people looking to archive media. Absolutely, and interestingly as well, um, we'll go into this in more detail, the case studies, but we operate hybrid architecture as well, which means we have our private cloud services, but we also hook into things like Amazon, AWS, um, IBM, SoftLayer. Uh, in the future, we're going to be able to bridge out to things like Google and Microsoft, and we're um, through the capabilities of the Zadara storage and the different software platforms that we integrate, we can actually move and manage data in multiple clouds, but it gets really high tech. Um, just moving forward to more around storage and distribution specifically. So this is really what today is all about. How do we leverage these cloud solutions for moving the big data? Um, in the last year, we've built out three core services which are perfect for storage and distribution. Firstly, in March last year, we launched a Signium Media Shuttle platform. We're going to show this to you today, and Kev's going to do a demo. Um, Signium was our um, first SaaS service that we launched, and it was um, done because our customers wanted to be able to ship data around easily. They wanted branded portals, and they wanted to be able to do it themselves from very lightweight computers. 
Um, that's been running for a year with 100% uptime, um, and it's a really cost-effective way to move lots of data. We then um, had a lot of feedback with customers saying, that's great, I want to be able to move stuff around, but what about when I come to the end of the sales period or when I come to the end of the production, how do I archive that without pulling it out of the cloud and putting it onto LTO or one of the old legacy formats? Um, so we built the Big Chill platform, which is it's built around Sadara's storage architecture. And, and in, in simple terms, what we do is we write the media files onto the storage and then we turn it into rest mode or into hibernation mode. And this drops the cost per terabyte by around 50%. Um, and it means that you can securely store your data um, in a guaranteed tier three data center. And then the final distribution service that we launched at Christmas or just after Christmas this year um, is Aspira Files, which is IBM Aspira's brand new hybrid platform. And th this is really interesting because it's actually like a miniature um, content management system mixed with file transfer. So there's a lot more functionality in there for things like file manipulation, proxy preview, publishing public links, that type of thing. And we'll show that to you shortly. So those are the three core services that we run for storage and distribution. Um, on the left, you can see um, the Signiant interface. A couple of the key features here, we've integrated with um, mobile phone multi-factor authentication for high security access. Um, it's also what we call a hybrid service. So it runs between our base media cloud and Amazon Web Services. Um, the benefit here is the user interface is delivered on Amazon, which means anywhere in the world that your users are get really high performance. The control layer that handles the transit of the actual data is managed by Amazon. Um, and then the core storage and the core services are run by our team in the UK. And the nice thing here is it's like having a facility partner with a hyperscale cloud in the background. So it's, you kind of get the best of both. And we've applied the same design principle to the Aspira Files platform on the right, um, which is a hybrid between our private UK cloud with Vodafone and IBM software in North America. Um, again, you get the best of both. You're getting really high performance interface, um, almost like an edge style service. And then the core storage, we can guarantee where it's located. Um, so that offers the kind of things that our media customers are asking for. Both of them are brandable. So you can have your brand um, front and foremost, but we'll actually show that to you shortly. So who are our clients? Well, this last year, we've actually got quite a few that we can't fit onto the screen, but um, you can see a variety here between production, broadcast, uh, post-production, distribution. Um, and there is a wide array of companies that are now migrating to cloud services. Um, but we're going to drill down into some, some real life case studies. So Christy, would you mind just um, dropping into poll number two, please? Yeah, so um, the next next question relates directly to what Ben was just talking about. We, we're curious, what, what market you guys are in? Are you in media and entertainment? Are you rights holders? Uh, sports market? Um, other brands or, or other? Um, so what market do you guys play in? What sectors do you operate? Let us know because, um, you know, we have a couple different case studies that we could touch upon and if there's more people in media and entertainment or there's more people in sports, we can talk, we can cater that towards you. So go ahead and go into the chat box where you can ask questions and, and go ahead and just type in A, B, C, D, or E and let us know where you guys are. Thanks, Christine. Love to see, yeah. love to see some more answers than last time if we can. That would be great. And also if anyone wants to email us directly or, or set up a meeting after the session, and um, we'll give you our full contact details later on. Um, the interesting thing about the platform is it is um, usable across all of these markets. You know, it doesn't lock into anything in particular. Um, but like I said before, we're very focused on media and large media content. So it looks so, like we've got some media and entertainment people. Fantastic. Okay, that's perfect. So the, um, the success stories we're going to go through are, are very much the media and entertainment sector. So this is good. Um, First of all, we're going to look at success stories in media production. And today we've actually broken it into production and distribution. Uh, we've bypassed post, uh, but if anyone again wants to find out more about our post-production work, then please do get in touch. Um, so the first example is what we've been doing with ITV. Um, ITV were one of our first customers last year, um, and they used us for data wrangling and file distribution between LA and London. And this is a really unique opportunity because and they had a film crew out in LA. They were filming 150 gigabytes of raw HD rushes each day. 
um, across a five-month period, and they had to transfer that content seamlessly from the shoot location to London, where the post-production was taking place. Um, previously, what they would have done is manually copy the rushes onto hard drives, uh, wait a few days until they had a decent amount of hard drives stored up, and then they would have flown those back to the UK, where they were physically ingested into the ITV storage. So um, typically, that was taking five days and quite a few thousand pounds in um, transport costs. So Kevin and the team, um, as an alternative, built them a cloud solution, which was built around Signant on our Zadara storage platform. And by using this process, we managed to condense the timeline to two hours. So from five days to two hours is how long it took to transfer a whole day's worth of filming. Um, the other interesting thing about it was it was automated, um, and we stored multiple copies of the data. So it's highly redundant, automated, and very high speed. Um, we've actually got, I believe, a workflow diagram here, which is hopefully not too hard to see on your screens. But Kevin, can you just talk a bit around the workflow that you built, and specifically around the auto delivery application that you deployed? Yeah, so we had um, basically had a production team over in LA, and they were basically taking cards, you know, um, from their cameras and using the auto signaling auto delivery application, um, running on a laptop, basically defining a hot folder, and copying the rushes into the hot folder. Um, over in the UK, we had 50-50 posts, and they had the auto delivery application running as well. So it creates basically an end-to-end -end -to -end sort of automated workflow. So any any files dropped over in LA were automatically being um, delivered across to 50-50, with the actual added benefit of having a sort of off-site backup at base as well. And as Ben said, a freeway mirror copy of each asset. Um, Excellent. And the, the nice thing about this was the it was the condensing of the the time zones, if you like. So when they finished filming in LA, they could set the rushes up loading, go to bed. As soon as the assets hit base, they were then automatically delivered to the post production house in Soho in London. And then when Soho came in in the morning to start their edit, everything was ready to go. So you know we're, we're actually also taking out a lot of manual labour, a lot of staff cost and time. Um, and crucially, just the hassle that, that has traditionally been the way that we have to ship media around. Um, so this is a really good opportunity, and it's actually becoming more and more prevalent in the data wrangling space. Um, one thing I should say is um, you do require um, good internet connection. Um, on the first day of this project, one of the assistants was trying to upload data from a hotel room on a 1.4 megabit ADSL connection, and obviously wasn't going to work. I think they had a 16-day um, transfer estimate came up on the screen. Um, but actually what they ended up doing was using a high speed connection at their office in LA um, and it was going at you know, very, very high line speed. So you know, there are always practicalities to take into account with these things, but typically if you've got you know, home broadband, uh, business broadband or, or a high speed lease line, then, then it works absolutely fantastically. So moving on to distribution. We've got a couple of examples here. Um, the main one being the platform that we've built with Aspira for the Formula E Championships. Formula E is produced by Aurora Media Worldwide out of London. Um, it's a global motor racing series, and it's the world's first ever fully electric vehicle racing. So it's, it's really revolutionary from a technology perspective. Um, and they came to us last year with a challenge around how do they store and distribute all of the different shows they're making from highlights packages to um, video news releases, team promos, you name it. Um, and also they have multiple locations, multiple broadcasters, and also multiple teams and sponsors to deal with. So lots and lots of users hanging off of the system. So we looked at it and decided that Aspira was the right fit. Um, the reason being that we could offer um, a, a high level of manipulation of the files in terms of moving and dragging and dropping, renaming, um, publishing public links, that type of thing. It also has built-in proxy previews, which Kevin can show you on the demo. Um, and the end result was they had a high-speed hybrid cloud storage platform, a distribution system that they can actually log in and use from their normal desktop computers 24 hours a day. Um, and on top of that, an archiving system. So we've taken the 2015 season, archived it privately in our Vodafone data center. And when any broadcaster around the world wants to request one of the archive shows, we can spin that up in about 30 seconds, connect it to the system, and it can be downloaded over the internet. So, you know, traditionally this would have been a, a support request into a facility, 
the data would have had to be pulled off of an LTO tape, put onto a drive, sent by courier, it would have taken days. We've condensed that down to hours. Um, so the next slide should show a high-level design of um, what care